Hello, third, fourth, and fifth graders. This is Mrs. Trenitza with your next library lesson. Um, today, this time we're going to talk about literary genres. And literary genres, and I'm sure you guys have heard this word before, it's the type of book that you are reading. Um, and the two main types are going to be, of course, fiction and nonfiction. And we're going to talk about the different genres in fiction and the different genres in nonfiction. All right, let's get started. Okay, your learning intention is that I can use strategies to help my reading comprehension, and success is I can complete activities that demonstrate understanding of select reading strategies. Okay, essential questions. How do good readers better understand what they read? And this was a question that we um, explored back when, before the um, holiday break, when we talked about summarizing, which is one of our reading strategies. And we said that readers better understand what they read by choosing just right books. And we've talked about that using the five finger rule. Also making and confirming predictions which also makes it interesting to read um, a story, what you predict is going to happen, and read it to see if your prediction was correct or not. Also, finding words you don't know and figuring out what they mean. Um, and a lot of times, you know, this is good for you to learn new vocabulary. And then making connections, which was a big part of our lessons before the break. Um, if you remember, there were three types, major types of making connections. We had text-to-text, -text, which means if you make a connection one from one story to another. Text-to-self is where you made connections between a story and something that's happened to you personally. And text-to-world, which is where you can make connections between a story and um, something in your world. Could be your family, could be where you live, maybe a place that you visited. And reading aloud fluently is very important. So being able to do that and to listen to yourself or have someone else listen to you and you being able to read without um, many mistakes where you can understand what you're reading. And these are some questions to think about too during our lesson. What are some of the strategies you've used? So far we've done strategies like um, conflict and resolution. We've done strategies like sum, uh, summarizing, um, making connections is definitely a reading strategy. Um, so what, which of these strategies do you use or have you used since learning about them? And also, what do you do to improve your reading comprehension? These are some things that you should think about while we're talking about the different types of genres. Okay, so these are the three main categories of genres, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Um, fiction has many different subcategory genres, and nonfiction does not have as many. Um, but we're going to listen to a Brain Pop video, and it will help us to identify different genres of fiction and nonfiction. Two kinds of people, my friend. Why do you live? The common desert vole. For centuries, scientists have exploited them. This Sunday, the revolution will be televised. We've bred these voles for maximum aggression. Outstanding. What's your name, son? Ah, you'll make a fine little soldier. This facility is sitting on a magma chamber the size of Rhode Island. I didn't get to be a six-star general by listening to nerds. Everybody run! Volcano. It's gonna blow. This is going to be the best thing that's ever happened to me. Dear Tim and Moby, 
I'm supposed to pick a summer reading list in my favorite genre, but I don't even know what that is. Can you help? From Emma. Hi, Emma. Before putting down a single word, writers have to make all kinds of choices. Should they write poetry or prose? Fiction or nonfiction? Should it be a novel, a play, a short story? Maybe it should be a script for a TV movie. These are just some of the different forms or modes that a piece of writing can take. Once that's decided, writers still need to pick a genre. That's sort of like the style they'll use to tell the story. Well, let's say you wanted to write a story about courage. It might be about a girl who protects her town from a marauding giant. That would be in the fairy tale genre. Or you might tell the story of a detective who overcomes his fear of the dark to figure out who done it. In other words, a mystery. Genres are flexible. They can work across different modes. Either of these could be a short story, a graphic novel, a play, you name it. You can tell a story's genre by the conventions it follows. These are similarities in tone, style, or subject matter. Sort of like the rules for that kind of story. If you've read a few mysteries or even watched some mystery shows, you know that the main character has to be a detective. Or at least someone who's trying to solve a crime. The detective will interview suspects and investigate clues. There's often a red herring, something that throws the hero and readers off the right path. It could be a suspicious character or a clue that seems to solve everything. Throughout the story, a sense of suspense keeps you turning the pages. And finally, the detective solves the crime using evidence that was available to the reader. As you read more of one genre, you start to pick up on its conventions. You'll anticipate plot twists and appreciate how authors play with the rules in unexpected ways. Well, like by mixing up the elements from different genres. Take Harry Potter. It's set in a world of magic and wizards, putting it in the fantasy genre. But it's also a coming-of-age story, tracking Harry's growth from a helpless kid to a confident young adult. J.K. Rowling blended elements from these genres in a unique way. Her creation was so successful, the coming-of-age fantasy novel is now practically its own subgenre. That's a more specific form of genre with its own particular conventions. For instance, satire is a subgenre of comedy that explores a problem with society. Diary of a Wimpy Kid is a good example. It satirizes how tough it can be to fit in at school. It's a painful subject in real life, but that's one of the conventions of satires. They touch on raw emotions, creating an effect that's funny and dark at the same time. Well, the, the point isn't to memorize all the conventions of every subgenre. Follow your own taste and learn as much as you can about your favorite genres. You can explore realistic fiction if you like to read, er, realistic stories. If you want to read about other galaxies or future technology, science fiction will be more your speed. As you explore, you'll see how authors use genre conventions to get across a story's main message or theme. Oh, this? Well, it's got giant man-eating rodents in it, so I'd say it's science fiction? And as silly as it is, it seems to be about the dangers of trying to control nature. That's a common theme in many different genres. Mary Shelley explored it in Frankenstein, about a brilliant doctor who thinks he can control life itself. Shelley uses the horror convention of a murderous monster to highlight the failure of the Doctor's ideas. Ernest Hemingway took on a similar theme in his realistic adventure story, The Old Man and the Sea. Here, the struggle against nature is represented by an epic battle between a fisherman and some hungry sharks. See? Three genres, three unique approaches to the same idea. The brain pop movie genre? What do you mean? This isn't fiction, it's real. A boy and his robot. For years, they've explained the mysteries of life. Real, I tell you. But the biggest mystery of all is right in front of them. Okay, guys, that was a good video. It helped to show you the different types of genres. Okay. So let's take a look. So like Miss T said, um, it's divided into three main categories. You have nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. 
So let's take a look at nonfiction. So nonfiction, if you remember, are books that are true or factual text. They're not make-believe stories, they're about real things. If you were in the library, the call number, which is the sticker that's on the side of the book, nonfiction books start with numbers or the Dewey Decimal System. Um, and the Dewey Decimal System goes all the way from zeros up to 900. And each one, like hundreds, two hundreds, three hundreds, four hundreds, they're all different um, subjects. So like in the 700s, you would find um, like football books. And in the 800s, you might find um, cooking books. Um, you also might find poetry books. Um, also, there's certain category, you know, certain um, categories in the numbers of the Dewey Decimal System, you know, for dancing, cars, racing, cooking, all different things. And when we get back to school, too, Miss T will go over that with you, the Dewey Decimal System and what each um, number category stands for. So when you go to look for nonfiction books, you'll know which section to look for for what interests you. Biography, that is also another nonfiction genre. And we talked about biographies being books written about people's lives. Now, if you can remember earlier in the year, we talked about also autobiographies. And we talked about those being books that people write about themselves. So let's say Miss T wrote a book about her life. That would be my autobiography. But let's say someone else decided they wanted to write a book about me. That would be my biography. The story of a real person's life. And it also, the call number on the side will also have numbers on it. It'll have a 92. Um, and that'll be something else when you guys come back to school that um, I can show you. And there we go. Call number begins with 92. Um, it's still a number because it is a nonfiction, um, and 92 is in the category for biographies. Okay, then we have traditional tales, which are fairy tales, which you guys know them more by the word fairy tales. And they're stories that are passed down from one generation to another. Things like Snow White or Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty or Beauty and the Beast, or The Little Mermaid, all those different types of fairy tales. Um, or you have Little Red Riding Hood, um, or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So you have, those are all fairy tales. Those are all stories that have been passed down, stories I even heard as a little girl. And I passed them, you know, made sure my daughters heard them as they were growing up. Then you have Poetry. Um, it's called a rhythmic and imaginative text written in verse. So when you look at poetry, you might have, depending, it could be three to five or even more lines put together. And when they're grouped, that's called a stanza. But each row um, of words, it, like each sentence, is called a line of poetry. And it doesn't always have to rhyme. Miss T, actually, I enjoy reading poetry that rhymes more than I do the ones that don't. Then we have mystery. Mystery is a suspenseful story about a puzzling event that is not solved until the end. And that was in our Brain Pop video. And it talked about different aspects, different things that you'll find in a mystery story. And then you have realistic fiction. A story that is fictional, but it could happen. So let's just say somebody made a story up of a boy and his family. And maybe the story was about them going on a picnic and they took their dog with them and the dog got lost. And it talked about the adventure they went through to get their dog back. Well, it's considered fiction because um, it, these are characters that don't really exist. But what the characters are going through, the story they're going through, is something that could happen in real life. That's why they're calling it realistic fiction. Then you have fantasy, things like Harry Potter. And that's a story that is not possible and may include talking animals or magical powers. So anything that has to do with, you know, magic or witches or anything like that, that's going to be considered fantasy or magical spells. 
Then you have historical fiction, which like realistic fiction, it is a fictional story, but the story setting or where it takes place is during a real time in history. So let's just say someone decided they wanted to do a story with made up characters, but it happened during the um, Revolutionary War. Well, the characters that they made up don't really exist, but they had the story, the setting took place during the Revolutionary War, which was something that really did happen. So that's why it's considered historical fiction. Um, or you might have a story that's set in the characters are make-believe, but it's something that was set during maybe World War II, um, World War I, the Vietnam War, something like that. It was still something during history or during like the Civil Rights Movement, but the characters are made up. So that's why it's called historical fiction. And then science fiction, and I know a lot of you like the fantasy and the science fiction. And the science fiction is a type of fantasy that uses science and technology, such as robots and time travel or machines. So anything that you might see that has like aliens or spaceships in it, um, or any type of robots, that would go under your science fiction genre. Okay, now we're going to do the genre matching activity. And this is going to help you guys be able to um, pair or group a book with what type of genre that it goes with. And this is going to help you better understand it also. So let's go ahead and we're going to make this a little bigger. Okay, let's zoom a little bit more. Okay, there we go. This will help us out. Okay, so look, our choices are science fiction, realistic fiction, fantasy, biography, nonfiction, traditional tales or fairy tales, historical fiction, mystery, and poetry. So those are all the main genres that we just talked about. So let's go through each book and see which genre would match the book. Okay, our first one is Meet President Barack Obama. So we know right off that this is a nonfiction book. It's a book about a real person. It's probably about the person's life. So which of these options up here, which genre would go with a story or a book about someone's life? And it was written by another person. So we know they're not going to be fiction or fantasy or fairy tales or this type of fiction, mystery, or poetry. It would be biography. Good job. Because remember, biography is a book about a real person. Um, it's written about a real person by another person. So Miss T is going to put her text box up here. And we are going to type in biography. Oops, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that will be our biography. Okay, so we are going to go up here and we are going to mark off our biography. Okay, that way it'll help, it won't confuse us. Okay, now we have a book. We can see on the cover it has a picture of a real dog. It has the name of the type of dog, Airedale Terriers, on the front of it. So we can guess, we can pretty much um, guess this is going to be a nonfiction book. It's about something real. It's about a real dog, and it even has the name of the dog on the cover. So we can count out any of the fiction or fantasy or fairy tales or mystery or poetry. So we do know it is a type of nonfiction. It's about something real. It's about a real type of dog called Airedale Terriers. So we can choose nonfiction. So Miss T is going to put her text box up here. And she is going to type in nonfiction. Okay, there we go. And we will mark off 
our nonfiction. Okay, so let's take a look at the next cover. It's called Cats vs. Robots. Well, we can tell that it's fiction because it talks about something that is fake. Can't really happen. Cats fighting with robots. And we have a hint right here in the title, Robots. So which one of these genres did it talk about could include robots? So we know it's going to be fiction. Um, we know it's not realistic fiction because... Even though it's a made-up story, robots and cats aren't gonna can't really run around and fight each other. Um, it it could be a type of fantasy, but it has robots in it. Um, we know it's not a fairy tale. It's not really a story that has been told from generation to generation. It doesn't take place any time in history. It's not a mystery and it's not poetry. So I think we'd be safe to say it's science fiction because we know it's fiction and it has robots in it. So that is a big clue that it's science, that it's science fiction. Okay, so we are going to put our text box and then we will type in science fiction. Okay, make it a little smaller here. There we go. Okay, excellent. And then we will mark off our science fiction genre so we don't get confused. Okay, good job. All right, so let's take a look down here. We have Harry Potter. Well, we know Harry Potter's fiction. We know there's different things in it like magic and magic spells and they ride around on their broomsticks and they have wizards and different things like that. So we can tell if we go up here, what type is that? We know it's a type of fiction, but we know it's not realistic fiction because those things can't happen in real life. We know it's not historical fiction because it's not something in history. It's not a really a mystery or poetry and it's definitely not a fairy tale, but it is a type of fantasy. Remember it has like magic in it and magic spells and wizards and witches and it has um, you know different things that cannot really happen in real life. So we can safe to say that Harry Potter will be the genre of fantasy. So Miss T is going to type in make sure I make it small enough. There we go. So this is fantasy. Good job. And we will go up here and we will mark off our fantasy. Okay, excellent. All right, Little Red Riding Hood. Well, this one should be pretty easy. This is a story that's told from generation to generation, just like Cinderella and Snow White. Um, Beauty and the Beast, Sleeping Beauty. So we can go up here and look at our choices that are left. Well, we know it's not realistic fiction because it can't happen in real life. We know it's not historical. It didn't happen back in history. It's not a mystery and it's not poetry, but it is a fairy tale. And it's a story that's told over and over again from one generation to another. So we can put our text box in here. And Miss T will type in fairy tale. Okay, good job. All right, guys, we'll go up here and we will take off traditional tales or fairy tales. Okay, good job. So now we have realistic fiction, historical fiction, mystery, and poetry left. So if we look at I Survived, okay, well we know that it's based on, the setting is based on something that happened in history. It says, um, the, I survived the attacks on September 11th, 2001, so 9-11. 
So we know it was it was a story that was based um, on something that happened in history. So it's historical. But with the I Survived series, these characters, they aren't real characters that actually lived through 9-11. It's just made up characters and it's a story that's written, but it's based around what happened on 9-11 back in 2001. So we could say realistic fiction, because yes, it definitely could have happened, could have happened, but we have a choice of historical fiction. And I think that genre fits it much better because it is about something that happened in history. It was something historical, which was the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. Um, but it is still a fiction story because the characters in it are made up. So we would be safe to say that I Survived would go under the genre of historical fiction. And we do have a lot of those books in the library. So I'm hoping when we um, get back to school, if you are interested in historical fiction and you like the I Survived series, um, you'll be able to check out some of those. And Miss T did actually order some new ones to get, to get for the library. So I'm going to put historical fiction. Okay, good job, guys. Okay, and we will go up here and we will take historical fiction out of this. Okay, good job. So we have realistic fiction, mystery, and poetry left. So let's go down and take a look at what we have left. Okay, we have Ramona Quimby, age eight. We have poems for every night of the year, and we have A to Z mysteries. Well, we know poems for every night of the year. The word poem gives away that this is a book about poetry, right? And A to Z mysteries, the missing mummy, this gives away that it's a mystery book. So our only other option would be realistic fiction. Well, if you think about it, Ramona Quimby, age eight, those books are a lot like um, you have um, Junie B. Jones, um, you have Amelia Bedelia. So they're made up characters, but the stories are based around settings, things that happen to the characters could happen in real life. Like things happen with Ramona or Junie B., um, things when they go to school, when they're at home. Um, maybe some of you know the books um, Beezus and Ramona or Ramona and Beezus. And there are things that these are made up characters. They don't really exist. But the author created these characters but made the setting and things that happen to them are things that could happen in real life. So that's why it would be considered realistic fiction. So we will put Ramona Quimby, just like if it was Junie B. Jones or Amelia Bedelia, and we will make that realistic fiction. All right, hopefully this is helping you guys understand genres more. A lot of you already know about genres, but this is a good review. Um, if you weren't really sure about the different type of genres or what they were about, then hopefully this has really helped you. And then if we go up here and we take out realistic fiction, and we will mark that off. And then like we said, we have mystery and poetry left. And these are pretty much giveaways. You could tell this is a book about poetry, and this is a book about a mystery. And the A to Z Mysteries, it is a, um, it's a good collection. It's a good series. Um, some of you may have already read a lot of them or most of them. Some of you may not have ever been introduced to them. And we also have those in the library for when you guys come back. So we can um, change this to poetry. And this would be mysteries. And of course, there are a lot of different mystery series. A to Z Mysteries isn't the only one. And those are things that we could research and look up when you guys come back too. And, and I'm going to show you how you can go on Mac and Via and look that up too. Okay, excellent. So we have been able to match all of our books with their genre. So Miss T will mark off Mystery. 
and I will mark off poetry. Okay, excellent. So we have been able to match every book with its genre. Excellent. Now what Ms. T wants you to do, and like I said, I hope you found this really helpful, either as a review or learning about genres. And what you can do is get into Mac and Via. And once you are in Mac and Via, this is what your, uh, what your page is gonna look like. Remember before when Ms. T told you guys about Mac and Via, I said you could go over to the category section. So once you're in Mac and Via, if you click on the category section, you will see a lot of the genres have their own sections over here that you can explore. Um, we have now animals and art and music, so a lot of these are nonfiction. We have biographies, which is also nonfiction. We have fairy tales. We have um, some regular fiction. If you go down, we have um, historical fiction. Um, there's also geography and the hum health and human body, which would also be nonfiction. Um, we have history, which is nonfiction. Mystery and suspense. If you remember, mystery is one of our genres. Um, religion, things like a religion and reference, those would be um, nonfiction. Um, we have romance, which would be fiction and a lot of those you might maybe you might find like realistic fiction and something like that ooh here's sci-fi and fantasy so you're gonna find science fiction and fantasy in this category then you have science and social studies which are going to be your nonfiction sports and rec nonfiction ooh supernatural so that's gonna be a type of fiction that'll be kind of like maybe Supernatural might be a lot of under fantasy too. Then you have technology and transportation, which is nonfiction. So you're going to find a lot of genres under these categories. And if you get a chance, what Ms. T would like for you to do is review the genres again and then go through these categories and pick one of the genres that you are really interested in. Whether it's a nonfiction one, which there were a lot of them, biographies, art and music, animals. Um, there were a lot of the fictions. We just had regular fiction, fairy tales, um, historical fiction, mystery. Um, you might find some realistic fiction under romance. Um, then a lot of these in here you can see are nonfiction. Um, and then here you've got your science fiction and your fantasy. But pick one that you like and then pick a book out of one of these categories. So let's say you're interested in biographies and you clicked on biographies. Okay, then let's say you're interested in Aaron Rodgers. So remember how we did this, you could add it to your favorites. So you could add it to your favorites and then when you go up here to look in your backpack under favorites, see, I'll find them under there. So if you get a chance and you can go to categories Pick one of the categories, pick like maybe a genre that you like, pick a title of a book under that category or genre, and put it in your backpack. And then if you could leave a little message for Miss T on the Google Classroom, like you did with the, the last lesson, where you typed in two or three titles of books that you were able to put into your, your backpack that you liked. Well, in this case, I would like for you guys to... Um, pick a title of a book from one of the categories, one of the genres, and put it in your backpack. And then when you message me on the Google Classroom, let me know which genre it was that you liked and the title of the book that you found that goes with that genre. And that would be really cool because then Miss T will know what kind of genres you like and what title you were able to find that goes with it. Okay? All right, guys, you did a great job. I hope that you enjoyed the, um, the lesson, learning about genres or reviewing genres. Um, and go in there and explore Mac and Via a little bit more. Go through those categories. See if you can find a title under a genre that you really like. Put it in your backpack and then message me and let me know what, what you found. Okay, guys, until next week, um, 
I would love for you guys to, you know, follow directions from your teacher and your parents, get your schoolwork done. If you need anything, just let Miss T know. You can email me, and I'll try to do my best um, to, to get in contact with you. Um, and until then, I will talk to you guys next week. So um, have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.